I was born in Houston. When I was two years old, my family moved back to Iran, where we're from. And when I was six years old, uh, the Islamic Revolution hit that country. The unrest was starting, and, and so my father, being a doctor, he had the means to get us out, and we moved back to Houston. It was not easy to be from Iran living in this country when a group of Americans were held hostage in Iran after the revolution. Uh, so a lot of people turned against us. We had rocks thrown through our window. Uh, my parents' cars' tires were, were slashed. Older high school kids threatened to beat up my brother and I. I didn't speak English, I spoke Farsi. And so God in his incredible plan provided for me a Christian lady who uh, became my tutor. My family didn't know she was Christian, but they were paying her uh, to teach me the English language. And so in the second grade, she comes up to me and she says, Afshin, I've been reading you all these books. Now I wanna hand you the most important book you'll, you'll ever read in your life. She handed me a small New Testament. And she said, you're not gonna understand this book today, but promise me you'll hold on to it and read it when you're older. Had any other American handed me that New Testament, I would have probably thrown it away. I didn't trust many Americans at the time. I grew up in a Muslim home. All I ever was taught growing up in Houston was the five pillars of faith of Islam, uh, that Jesus was just a prophet. And basically, if I did those five pillars of faith to the best of my ability, then maybe uh, I would get to heaven. My senior year in high school, I became curious about the person of of Jesus. I remember playing basketball and taking the Lord's name in vain. I just said Jesus and a guy walks over to me and he says, hey, that Jesus you just said, uh, he's my God. And I said, no, 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 he's not. He's not, he's not the Lord. He's, he's just a prophet. And he goes, no, 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 he's Lord. He is God in human form. And I thought the guy was nuts. And so um, I go home. I said, you know, I think I got a Bible somewhere. So I go upstairs to my room and look all over my room. And if you can believe this, after 10 years, I found it sitting at the bottom of my closet waiting for me all those years. And I read the whole book of Matthew in one sitting. I get to the book of Romans in the Bible and it changed my life. And I started to see uh, the truth of the gospel. It said that this righteousness comes to all who believe. And see, I thought I was born a Muslim, I was stamped a Muslim, I'd always be a Muslim. But that said for anyone, any race, any ethnicity, any nation. So a couple of weeks after that, I'm at a football practice and a guy invited me uh, to a Christian event uh, with a very funny name. It was called a crusade. And I looked at him and I go, you know, I'm a Muslim. You're inviting me to a thing called a crusade. And he goes, oh, no, no, it has nothing to do with that. Um, he said, it's, uh, there's free pizza there. And I go, oh, I, I like free pizza. So I went and I heard the gospel preached. God opened my heart to believe. And I put my faith in Jesus Christ and everything changed for me. And I'm ashamed to say this, but for about a year and a half, I hid my faith from my father. I would sneak out to go to church. Uh, I'd hide my Bible. And finally, one day, my dad found out. And he said, son, what's going on? And I said, well, dad, I'm a Christian. And he said, no, you're not, young man. You're a Muslim, and you'll always be a Muslim. And I said, dad, the Bible says if I trust in Christ alone for my salvation, then I'm a Christian, and I do. And my dad said, Afshin, if you're going to be a Christian, then you can no longer be my son. Now here's a God I've known for a year and a half. Here's my dad, my, my entire upbringing, my culture, my hero. And so everything in me wanted to say, forget it, I'll be a Muslim. Uh, I didn't want to lose my dad. Even I was surprised when I opened my mouth and these words came out instead. I said, Dad, if I have to choose between you and Jesus, then I choose Jesus. And so my father disowns me on the spot. And this is the definitive moment of my life. I fell on my knees and I said, God, how could you do this to me? I said, Jesus, if you're real, how could you take my dad away from me? And I turned in the Bible to Matthew uh, chapter 10. Do not suppose I've come to bring peace to the earth. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. And then he says this, for I've come to turn a man against his father. And I'm reading this going, whoa, this just happened for me. And then Jesus says this, whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Well, a year after my dad disowned me, he took me back in, but only on a provisional basis. As long as I'd go be a doctor and make him proud. You see, he thought my Christianity was just a phase. I knew it and everybody around me knew that God was calling me into ministry, into preaching. At that time, I was about to graduate university and go to medical school. And my dad was gonna pay for my entire medical school. I was gonna take over his practice and be set for life. I said, dad, uh, I'm not going to medical school. God's calling me to be a pastor, a preacher, and I'm gonna to go to seminary. 
and he called it the biggest stain on his life. And I said, Dad, you know how much I love you, how much I want you to be proud of me? And he said, son, not only would I never be proud of you, but I'll always be ashamed of you as long as I live. And those are the hardest words for a man to hear from his father. But listen to how faithful God was. I went to seminary with $4 in my pocket, didn't have a job, only had my first semester's tuition paid for by my church, and God provided for me every step of the way. And a few years ago, I was preaching at a church in Houston where it all started for me. And my father, who in 25, 26 years had never heard me preach, came into that setting. And my father came up to me and he gave me a hug and he said, he's proud of me. Uh, and I've shared the gospel with him several times and he said he would consider it. So we're still praying for him. But my story, listen, is not about how faithful I was because the truth of it is I went kicking and screaming most of the time. My story is about look how faithful God is. I found the truth that in Jesus, there's a God who loves me, who isn't waiting for me to be good enough because I will never be good enough. But in Jesus, I found a God who loves me and he came to me, he came to us. I think the fear that most Muslims have is, you know, they've been told all their life that Christianity has been corrupted. It's a, it's, it's a false religion that men have twisted the scriptures. And so I think there's this fear that um, I'm going to be accepting something that's gonna cast me out from my society. Today, I could be a doctor and have my dad proud of me, but I would have missed the life Christ had for me. I hope that in my story, in my life, uh, they would see that it's worth it because what you get in Jesus, forgiveness of sins, assurance of salvation, and to know that God is with you and has a plan that's gonna be bigger than you is worth losing anything for.